Hey everybody, so we've been talking the rules of color relationships, and I promised you guys in the last talk that I'd follow it up with a little demonstration, and so let's do that. And so to ease us back into that, let's review this most basic and simple of ideas, which can open up so much to us. So over here on the left, this is just brown on brown, not really interesting. But if you take that exact same brown and surround it by a color that has a little bit of contrast, all of a sudden that mud turns into magic. And this is where rich, subtle color comes from. You can drastically improve your color, not by what colors you choose, but what you surround those colors with and place side by side. So I did this little digital landscape study with this related brown on brown on brown kind of an idea, but trying to pull something a little bit more interesting out of it. And by the way, if you'll allow a recommendation, I've just come out with my digital landscape painting workout series. 30 days, 30 demonstrations, less than an hour each, and we supply you with the relevant references and then you paint along with me scenes like these every day for 30 days to get your day off on the right start. So I hope you'll consider joining me for that, which comes from the fantastic platform, schoolism.com, but let's get right to it here. Let's start out with these steps for this image. So this is a quick gestural study, so to speak, of a landscape in the fall. So you see that I have some subtle varieties of color here. And to get those colors just right, easy does it. Let me show you what I mean. So I just started out with a field of color, a little texture on it. And I'm going to be painting with a lot of texture and some transparency. And so this warmth will infuse into just about everything and that'll help it harmonize. But remember too much harmony, you know, same, same, same. We have a bunch of mud. So let's go to the next step here. Okay. So I just started going for it here. Light blue sky, fall foliage colors. It's the outside leaves that tend to pick up more of the fall color more quickly. And so you see that there's a suggestion of some bushes, like for instance, over here, we have the warmth on the outside, but on the interior is still some green in there. And that's the logic of what was really happening in this shrubbery. And it gives some rich notes of color at the same time with this blue light kind of filling in to the background, we get some of these cool temperatures along the top edges and coming into some of the shadows because that atmosphere will infuse into the shadows the further away that we get. And then we come down where this line of brush contacts the ground. And so we get some of these darker darks here. So let's jump to the next step because there was a really nice stream rolling through this location. And so I just indicated that just zigzagged it towards us in perspective. It's reflecting that color of the sky. And the reflections were kind of special, visually interesting in the light, cool temperature of it. And so it was both true and very necessary in the sketch to get these darker tones around it so we can really feel the light of it. And those are banks where the plane of the earth kind of turned towards us so that it was catching less light. And so you can see those warms infusing through everything. At the same time, we have a wide variety of color. And by the way, if you're interested in what technique this happened to be, I'll show you that in a minute. This isn't a technique lecture, but let's get the principle out there. And then I'll be happy to show you that in a moment. So here's the next step to bring in some light and push it further. And then let me go ahead and show you the finish so that we can go over everything that's happening here. So there we go. You see the branches kind of sprinkling through there, peeking out from behind the bushes to give some depth and some visual interest. You see the before and the after of that. There's some sunshine, a little bit of kind of backside lighting coming in that I've dropped in there. You can see the little hill here catching some light, that tree casting a shadow down the hill, a little bit of sunlight catching here and blended into the shrubbery a little bit more reflection in the water. 
And then to pop the foreground, there are these little accents of tall grasses that frame against the light of the reflection. And so that gives some visual interest in the foreground that gives us a nice lead in into the picture and creates a little bit of depth. So it's that simple to build this up. But we are talking about subtle color relationships here. And that's what I think this image is built on. So let me just go to this to make that point. So for those of you who saw part one of this, you'll recognize where I'm going with this. But let me take and zoom in here. I'm just going to zoom way, way in. And there's a spot right here where I looked around and found a few pixels that have the strongest cool green feeling quality just right you know right in here nice cool green and I selected that and I brought it over and I put it right here let's zoom back out and surrounded it by an actual cool green and let me just prove that I'm on target here so let me select it and there it is just to show you that that is indeed the color and that color that felt like such a cool green, well here when we put it next to an actual cool green, it doesn't feel cool green at all. It feels like a, a, you know, a, a brick red. And that's the subtlety of color relationships. Let's do it again. Let's go down here and let's take a look. And so I picked out the place that had the coolest feeling purple, kind of a blue purple that I could find. And so let me just select that, you know, right here, the most blue purple pixel. And uh, we'll just kind of show you. There it is. Same thing. And in this context, by an actual blue purple, it doesn't feel blue purple at all. It feels, again, like an extremely warm color. So let's go to something that's uh, even more blue, kind of a blue cyan over here. And, you know, this one... It's not even surrounded by these red colors like some of the other ones were that have a strong influence. So if we just look at it right here, well, I mean, surely that's going to look somewhat blue when we do the same thing with it. Let me just select it there and just prove that it is, in fact, the color. There it is. Well, it actually feels like a warm gray when you put it next to an actual cyan blue. And so do you see the potential problem here as you paint? The amateur will say, oh, okay, I need a cool green. And they'll dutifully reach for the green and the blue and mix up a cool green. And they might neutralize it a little bit. And then they won't understand why it doesn't look right in their painting. Because it's not a cool green. It's something a little bit different. And they'll want to mix up a cool. They'll see a blue in their environment. So they'll dutifully reach for their oil paints or whatever they're using and dutifully mix up a blue. And then they'll put it down and not understand why it looks so horrible. Because it's not really a blue. It only felt blue in its particular context. And again, same thing here. Okay, so that's why understanding the subtlety of color relationships is so critically important. Colors have a powerful relationship on each other when they're side by side. And whenever you put two colors that have any contrast from each other, the contrast will intensify. And that's the principle of simultaneous contrast of color. And we have to take that into account as we're painting and as we're designing color relationships. And that's how you can build up the rich colors of nature. Okay, so if you're busy, you're done. But I did promise to show the brush and the technique here, so if you'd like to stick around, we can take a moment and do that. So here's what's happening. I have a simple texture brush that I'll show you exactly in a moment, but we've got this base color that we looked at, and then I'm just working over top of that and just building up color. So for instance, just to recreate what's happening up above, maybe just bring in some of this orange 
and then come into some of these golden colors and layer those in. And then come all the way into the yellows and get those yellow highlights in there. Get some of these golds a little more strongly. And then there were those greens that I was talking about. So we can grab some of that. And just ease some of those in. And easy does it. And then some of those blues. So we can just kind of glaze some of the blues in there. And so it's just by a matter of degrees. And so we're getting these very subtle colors where is it warm? Is it cool? Well, this is definitely cool. And what's next to it is definitely warm in this context. And they're so subtle. This is really just a cool gray. And this is just really kind of a brown, a brick red. But side by side, they bring each other to life. And that was the breakthrough of the Impressionists, to put these side-by-side -side colors that by themselves weren't anything special, but brought together, they'd really vibrate. Okay, so the brush settings, I have Shape Dynamics on with Size Jitter set. I have some scattering turned on. Oh, and I missed angle jitter. Definitely have that going. And then I have pressure sensitivity turned on. So there's a little bit of a glazing effect. And then let's just fill this in. Go to black. Turn all of that off. And that's the shape. It's just a little piece of texture. So you're welcome to capture that as a brush if you want to. You can just frame capture this and grab it. And in fact, we might even come in and clean up some of the squared off edges to keep it looking nice and organic. Okay, so you're welcome to that. But this brush isn't special. There are a gazillion good texture brushes out there. It's how you use them that makes the magic. So as always, best wishes for your artwork.